Hello again, everyone. Barry Hyatt here in Scottsville at the University of Kentucky Extension Office with my good friend Janet Johnson. Janet, of course, the college football season has kicked off. And we're, aren't we excited, Barry, to be from UK and have a football team that we're kind of proud of in the SEC? Well, they looked very good against Florida. Yes, they did. Yes, Most so certainly. we're kind of excited. Of course, we're not to UT standards at this point, but we'll, well see. We're, we'll not, see. we're not to our, our old standards <laughs> either. Well, so, yeah. maybe we'll all get there together. And you were in Lexington last week. I was in Lexington for the week, Barry. We actually had a national meeting for all of the extension agents for family and consumer sciences across the nation mm -hmm. and saw many of my Tennessee co-workers, including mm -hmm. Laura Stevenson, who is the new program leader, of course, okay. at UT, uh, my former good friend and from the University of Kentucky. And so good what to did, see what, her. What did you do there? What was the purpose? We had, again, learning workshops. It was an in-service training for us, professional mm -hmm. development opportunities. Okay. And with Kentucky being the host, we sponsored mm -hmm many special events including a welcome event at the Kentucky Horse Park sponsored by our oh, Department wow. of Agriculture cool. and featuring some of our plated up Kentucky Proud recipes for people yeah. to sample so it was a good way to introduce the project that we promote here mm -hmm. on NCTC right. to the rest of the nation and they were awesome. really really excited to learn about that. Good deal. Well speaking of those recipes oh, we have yeah. a good one cook cooking up today don't we? We do. We have a very versatile recipe Barry and mm -hmm. we're going to call it a beefy stuffed pepper which is a main dish supper. Mm -hmm. We're going to substitute some different things but actually you could make this particular deal and it could almost become a nacho in itself. Okay. It's, it's, it could be a really unique nacho covering with your chips or you could again bake it as a casserole. So I want people to think about, oh, I might like this filling in this way. So think about some of your recipes where you could substitute. But a beefy stuffed pepper is what we're going to start with okay. because it is the end of the season for gardens, and but peppers are great yes, right now. Yes, they are. They, they are wonderful. Are. You know, your sweet peppers are beginning to change colors, like mm -hmm. this little guy right here. Mm -hmm. But this just means this guy has a lot sweeter flavor and is wonderful mm -hmm. to kind of switch up your normal beef stuffed peppers that right. we use the green guys, but why not consider the red ones? That's my favorite right there. I, I think so too. <laughs> so we'll show you the basis today of how to make the recipe, but then mm -hmm. I encourage you to visit your farmer's market or take advantage of your gardens and get these little guys out. Now to start with, Barry, the recipe that we're going to do today serves about four people. It only mm -hmm. takes a half a pound of ground beef and a very okay. lean ground beef to get started. Okay. Now you may want to go ahead and brown the entire pound of ground beef mm -hmm. and you may want to go ahead and mix the filling up and I'll show you if you want you can go ahead and with the entire filling you can go ahead and put extra in a freezer weight bag and mm -hmm. put this in the freezer so you could bring this out and have a quick supper. Right. Yeah so uh, don't worry about making a little extra with the rest of the half a pound of ground beef. Uh, or you can save it and refreeze that if you like to. Or you can be a pig like me and just eat the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. You could just eat it all, right? Eat it then. all. Who wants to save? That's it. <laughs> so <clears throat> what we started with, we actually took the peppers. And of course, to make a stuffed pepper, everybody knows this. Yes. I mean, you would actually cut off the top. Mm -hmm. Now, I generally save this berry. Okay. You know, I'll put it in a little bag to use for some other things. I don't sure. waste a lot. Right. But you're cutting the top off, and then you just take a knife and you remove the seeds and mm -hmm. the membranes yes. so you're yes. creating a little container mm -hmm. you know literally Certainly, yeah. you know for this and uh, what we do then is actually take these peppers and here is one of the ones that's turning and one of the nice green ones right we just submerge those in boiling water mm -hmm. so just a nice uh, large saucepan mm -hmm. boiling water put them in for five minutes okay. and that just softens the peppers you don't want to cook them through and through and through okay but you're trying to just soften them just a little and mm -hmm. then you actually turn them upside down mm -hmm. on like a cookie sheet line with a paper towel and just let them dry and right. let them cool down mm -hmm. and then you make the filling now we start again we're urging people to think about new grains like uh, kiowa or uh, couscous and we've mm -hmm. done some things here we with have. couscous Most certainly, yeah. well today we're using a roasted chicken with vegetable couscous or you could use a whole wheat couscous Depends on what your store has. And mm -hmm. today in Food Line at Scottsville, they did not have whole wheat couscous, but they have had it. So we're substituting and using a different flavor, and it works. It's okay. Sure. You know, it's really good. But all you do, it's so easy to work with this grain. It doesn't take any time to cook it. Mm -hmm. You just put uh, one and a fourth cups of water, or you could use chicken broth if you're using a whole wheat couscous, and uh, the seasoning packet, and just a tablespoon of olive oil or 
butter or margarine mm -hmm. in with it. Mm -hmm. And you just let that come to a boil, put your couscous in and mm -hmm. let it sit for just about five minutes. Okay. And then you fluff it and what you have is this wonderful little pebbly grain mm -hmm. that looks like cornbread, crumbled mm -hmm. cornbread. Right. And we've used that in salads and things too. But this is wonderful, but you take a cup of cooked couscous and you get started with the filling. And I love this texture. I love it so much more than rice. Mm -hmm. I really do like it. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of cornbread. Yeah. And we all love cornbread we, in the if South. If you're in the South, you love you cornbread. You love no, cornbread, certainly. absolutely. So we start with that, and then we begin to mix the filling. And what we're going to do is take um, a small tomato. Now, if you like a lot of tomato, this is where you're getting some liquid to kind of bind this together. Mm -hmm. You might put a couple of Roma tomatoes, which do not have as much liquid. Or mm -hmm. if you're using a tomato that has more liquid, mm -hmm. then you cut down on the amount. I mean, okay. that's what you're doing. Or you might like a lot of tomato, and you just do what you want to. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not a real way, Barry, you can really mess this up <laughs> with quantities. This is my kind of recipe. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of like, well, do use one. If you've got two, use two, whatever. Yeah, there you go. So, but normally a small tomato. And then we're doing a half a cup of garbanzo beans or extras. Mm -hmm. Now I had a few extra left in the can. I'm just going to put them in. Sure. You know, I'm not going to well, waste there. Mm -hmm. Garbanzo beans, again, add more uh, fiber. Mm -hmm. They have a, they're a source of protein as well. Mm -hmm. So, so, but very low fat, very mm -hmm. low fat. So we've got a lot of texture and it really a different crunch in this too. I mm -hmm. love this. So mozzarella cheese, right. tomatoes, and garbanzo beans along with the couscous at this point. Now we're going to add some seasonings and this is kind of to taste so I'm going to put you know about um, about a teaspoon and I kind of guess at that you know uh, to put that in and I like seasoned salt uh -huh. so I use seasoned salt sure. but you could use regular salt and then I'm going to use some coarse ground pepper that mm -hmm. kind of gives a, a real impact there but you only use this to taste and probably no more than a half a teaspoon, but uh, I think the recipe actually says a fourth a teaspoon, okay. but it's really good. And now uh, our secret ingredient, it's Italian seasoning with mm -hmm. this. We've got the mozzarella cheese going on. So we're actually gonna put a teaspoon of uh, Italian seasoning. And uh, depending on your taste, you can raise that proportion or lower that proportion. Mm -hmm. Depending on your Italian seasoning taste. <laughs> Some people are not into that. So we have salt, pepper, Italian mm -hmm. seasoning in there. And we're just going to kind of stir that up and set that aside. Now, before everyone came to visit the kitchen today, I went ahead and browned the ground beef. Yes. And I browned it, Barry, with uh, a little chopped green onion, about mm -hmm. a tablespoon. Again, if you like more onion, you just put more onion. I mean, if you've got two little green onions, put mm -hmm. the whole thing, sure. you know. Sure. And I did about uh, two garlic cloves, about a tablespoon of garlic. Mm -hmm. So a tablespoon, tablespoon. If you like more garlic, you can add more garlic, mm -hmm. like that. And that depends on the cloves sometimes that sure. you have and the size. Mm -hmm. So what we did is just brown this beef. And now we're gonna add that mixture, Barry, to this mixture. Okay. So I'll let you kind of help me okay. and I'll hold this up and you just kind of help me scrape that there out. There we go. There we go. It, it comes out pretty easy. It certainly does. And Did if you all? use a really low fat ground beef, you'll find that you really have no fat left to um, yeah, drain. there's nothing left in there. No, and yes, that was a 93% ground beef. You have to be careful not to overcook that though, Barry, okay. so, so be careful like that. Don't get it too brown. So we're just mixing up this nice filling, mm -hmm. and this has a wonderful smell to it, it and it, it really is a, a nice, sweet mixture to have. And I say sweet because, again, the cornbread, the couscous, has kind of a sweet texture mm -hmm, sure. with it, too. Savory and sweet that we have going. Really good. Exactly it right. does have a wonderful thing, and it's so easy to do, and you can see that. Now, what we're going to do is all you do, of course, is take your peppers that you've already cooked, yes. and you're actually going to just stuff the pepper mixture mm -hmm. in the pepper and kind of put it in there and kind of make it go down in, kind of pat it in, pat it in sure. and fill your pepper. And that's as easy as it is. Now what I'm gonna do uh, in a baking pan, you can use a glass pan or a regular pan. I kind of spray those with cooking spray mm -hmm. and then set the peppers inside. So 
when we turn around, we have four peppers that should be coming out of the oven right now. Oh, wow, okay. And we're gonna take those out and show everyone and pull those out. This is what we call the magic of television, right, Barry? Absolutely the magic of television <laughs> there, Barry. So, you know, we can see how we've done, but we have four nice uh, brown peppers here, roasted right. peppers, and this is a wonderful filling, wonderful filling. And this actually doesn't take very long to cook at all. It's only about 15 minutes, you know, just so you're melting the cheese in there. Mm -hmm. And that's why a moment ago when we talked about mm -hmm. extra filling, sure. you could easily do a small casserole and just mm -hmm. put a little extra cheese on top, mm -hmm. and you could have a little casserole, yeah. you know, so a little if you don't main want the peppers, casserole. Then you can do that. Or, you, or maybe you could even cut up a little bit of the pepper and just put it in the mixture and just have it that way, I guess. You could. That's absolutely true. So that's mm -hmm. what we're saying, that this is an extremely versatile recipe. But you can see that this little filling, I think it's an excellent kind of nacho-like filling where mm -hmm. you bake it and then you can it can be a dipper, yeah. you know, that you can have Most with certainly. chips for tailgating parties. It could, College it football could, games, it, high school football it games. It could be any different <laughs> way. So it's really versatile. We're marketing it, of course, as a main dish, a beefy stuffed pepper. Mm -hmm. But like I said, once you get the filling made, you decide what Brilliant. you want to do. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's, it looks great, and I'm yeah. sure it tastes very good as well. It's very, very good. Very well, tasty. It's easy to get this recipe, too. If you'd like this recipe, you can either email me at North Central. My email address is barry.hyatt at nctc.com, or you can just check out our website. We'll put it on our website at www.nctc.com. And Janet, as you mentioned, it's oh so easy to make. Even I think oh so I easy. Can do it's very, very easy and very fast to do. Well, good to see you again. Good Thanks to so see much you. for your time. Great. And thank you all so much for watching. Take care. We'll see you again really soon. Have a good rest of your day.